Teach me grappling. What's up, guys? Brian Peterson. Anton Colista. Guys, we are going to show you something that I went over with Anton the other day. Here, come on up. Okay. No, no, I was just saying, bring the camera. Talk to Anton a little bit. Anton, you said that uh, I showed you something. You did. And then it started to work for you. Yeah, made life easier. Okay. So, it had to do with the guard. Here, I'll start out and then. But here's the point, guys. He asked me the question. What do you do when someone stiff arms, right? Yeah, basically. So, so right here. Strong, strong man stick. Right. So I'm trying to pass the guard. Okay, I want to pass the guard. I start to move past the legs. Notice I position myself so that I'm no longer in the half guard. Like, I'm going to make sure I'm here. Now, once I start doing this, you guys will start to get on this side of the legs. But now, what you're dealing with, you have a knee here, still giving you problems. And then you have hands like this. And so what happens is, as you push the leg and you try to drive weight on top of him, this guy's so strong, he's on his side, he shrimps, replaces the knee, you're stuffing the knee, you're dealing with frames again, you start to pass, and then during this time he brings the guard back in, he may pummel his leg all the way over, whatever the problem is, um, you, you end up like getting caught back in the guard. So how do I deal with this? And I, I want to give you guys this principle. Um, I was making a joke earlier. This is like a Danaher principle. Because um, John Danaher is so famous for like coming up with very sophisticated principles of jujitsu, Which sometimes I laugh at, but he is very good. So I don't mean to talk too much shit. But principles are good. Because principles help you guys learn how to deal with problems. And so here's the very, very simple principle. When a guy is pushing me away with the upper body, he's basically pushing at my upper body with his upper body. So watch, his upper body's pushing my body away. I can't get close to him. I can't break through the defenses that, that I'd like to, but it's very hard. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give him my lower body. So as he's pushing me like this, like this, I'm now going to step in and bring my lower body. What this automatically does, you notice my upper body goes away. This now makes your opponent immediately focus on your leg. So let's say I stayed here and he focused now on my leg with his elbows in, let's just say elbows in, and he started pushing my leg away and shrimp and shrimp. Boom, I lose the position and then he replaces the guard, okay? You see how that works? Let, let me show you that again. So. I move, I'm getting, starting to pass, I'm trying to snap, I go lower body. When I go lower body, he's then now gonna go lower body to my lower body, because that's what's invading. So this is now what's invading, it's coming through, getting the guard pass for me. At this point, he focuses here. If I stay with this kind of attack, many times you will only hold this for a second or two. He'll then bump and shrimp, and you'll lose it, and then he'll recover. So we can't let him do that. So what do I do? I oscillate between, that's a Danaher word right there, oscillate. <laughs> I will oscillate between the upper body and the lower body. So watch, I'm trying to pass, I start with a leg drag. So I'm getting about like right here. Let's say I'm, I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna push the knee and I'm getting into the bench press. I go lay, lower body. Once he focuses, the moment, the timing, the moment he focuses on the leg, I immediately drop the upper body and my upper body drops, okay? Now I happen to drop in this case, hand on the far side, right hand on the near side, okay? So you can come around and get some angles so they can see kind of like where the hands are if they, they wanna know. Now remember, a lot of times an opponent now, he may try to focus on belly down to go to a single leg. You know, this is a common thing. He'll get all the way up maybe, just go all the way to your knees, just simple. Yeah, he'll go to his knees, and then if you try to sprawl and go for a headlock, he'll sit to his guard. He'll sit to his guard, and then you'll end up back. So that's a common one. It's not the only one, but it's common. So watch what I'm doing. I'm coming in. Let's say I start with the lower body. I try to go here. He pushes here. I go here. He bench presses me again. I go here. He focuses back, because now I'm, now I'm starting to invade. He focuses, I drop back down. If the guy's about to go for the single leg, I side switch, my knee comes over, he's trying to turtle, I drop elbow, 
and I either come and catch him in side control, possibly with a back attack like this. I also might catch the guy full turtle. And then in full turtle, I'll be coming towards the back here, looking for the back and the control, okay? But simply what I did is I used good timing to go high, low, high, low, high, low with the proper timing. So again, it doesn't matter if your first one is upper body. So let's say I was trying to pass here, I go here. The second, I just go right back. And then now there's the side switch and I'm coming back into side control catching the guy here. So that, that there's a look at how, what I'm doing and what makes it work. If you, if I was a step behind, it wouldn't work at all. Anton, you wanna say anything? Cause I, is this, what else? I, I just. I mean, those are the three basic movements I think I've been using because I, for me, I can pass probably anybody's guard kind of at will, but then the, the wrestling, you know, instinct is, this guy's on his back, I need to smash him, then I kind of stay really low and close and try to, you know, like slide in the mount or something or get into submission. So I was always getting caught with that, the armpit or just getting stiff armed by guys like Dave who are, you know, jacked and yeah, the knee, uh, just getting the knee and belly, I think is a huge help. Cause then you can see, you, you also can kind of see a lot better too. Yeah. When you're lower to the ground, you can feel what's happening, but if you're physically up, you can like play with the hands, you can catch like arm bars and right. stuff. You can, but you can choose when you want to sidestep right. and switch, go to the other side, and you have so many, you have the options to slide into mount too, right? So if they if they go away, right, we can you know, side switch, or better if they're just sitting there, I'm like, okay, I'll just knee slides go right into mount. Yeah, possibly. You know, let me let me say this, because I'm, I'm as we're we're finishing up this video, I want to like try to make sure I give everything I can. Um, something I think the biggest mistake, I talked about the, the timing. But I think what most people do is they come in with a one track mind and they try to pass, like you're standing, right? Yeah. They try to go with the simple, like go to neon belly, just go to neon belly. So that's their move. See that? Everybody see like, that's a, that's a guard pass. Boom, we got a guard pass. Go back and do it again. So when, when you're focused on this, I'm pushing your legs and I'm trying to recover. You see, now once you drop down, I now I'm thinking to myself, Okay, look where my right hand is in this moment. We just played a little chess. Look at my hand, my hand was down low, got trapped. I'm now gonna retract and put it in between. So look where I put my hand. So what did I do? I brought my hand from the lower point to the upper point and what, if you don't move and you just try to pressure me, look what my next move is. Free my head and now as you're, you're gonna get back up, I'll let you get up. Now look, I'm now blocking away head control so that this lower, this lower body of mine can come in here. And what do most people do? They, they think, well, while I'm trying to do this, they try to smash. And that, that helps the guard replace. That helps me get it back, the retention. But if you just change, either by doing a side switch or in the case of my argument, yeah, exactly, look where my arms are. So again, maybe I release and now my focus, and now you're hitting that side switch. And so I'm always a step behind, which is what like everyone loves to talk about, right? I heard the step behind phrase mostly in the game of chess, and it's so, uh, that's what it is. You're a step behind. It's, it like applies to jujitsu so, so much. Once you're a step behind, the other guy's a step ahead, you're always responding to what he's doing. And that's what we want. We're on top, we're trying to pass the guard. Don't let that guard guy, you know, get a step ahead of you. Then you're responding. Now you're worried about submissions. I'm not on the bottom with Anton while he's passing my guard. I'm not thinking about submissions if he's constantly passing my guard. I always need to recover the guard and then get back on the attack so that he's now responding to me and he's a step behind and I'm a step ahead. So what else can I say? There's that. That was my best Danaher impression. I'm not really good at impressions. Guys, thank you so much. Thank Anton. And uh, you guys know it. Like this video, share it. And we have the YouTube membership. We have the links down below uh, for Patreon and PayPal if you guys want to contribute to this channel. If this video helped you, made you a better grappler, made you a better martial artist, you can always contribute. Thank you guys who already do. And we'll be back next time with more great stuff. Thank you,
Let me sit down. Mm-hmm. Again. <laughs> yep. Okay, again. Mm -hmm. And you just do that for a whole breath. <laughs> and, and, and then you, you talk about uh, levers and frames and, and leverage. Then you get into like tangents and stuff. You're like, you see when, when your elbow turns, you have the sine and cosine. You have the tangent. That's the opposite over adjacent. That's the force of this angle. Oh, it's the man. force of my arm driving this. That's side. like a like a or Pythagorean pull, theorem, theorem something kind right of there. Like yeah. We can get in. We can do some. We can do some linear algebra. We can do some Fucking guy. Hey, 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 John. Talk um, to me. So, so go ahead and let me know what the, the quadratic formula is. Oh, fucking C. You have to be lake-centric, Brian Peterson. Lake-centric. Centric? What are you talking about? It's x thing. equals negative b plus or minus square root. Oh, oh, b squared minus 4ac. Oh, 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 over 2a. Oh, over 2a. Oh. Oh. Real quick, do you think Danaher knows the quadratic formula? Uh, probably. Quadratic yeah. equation? Probably. Maybe. He probably does, actually. Probably I, should, probably does. I shouldn't challenge him. On that. An you want to have a math competition over here? Come to PG. Danaher, show up. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? We're, we're like you cutting hair? There's a the lot gym? of things going on. Sometimes we get financial advice, get a little stock market. Sometimes you get a haircut. You look good. You know, this Sometimes is a place, you sit listen, in a song. The mats and this PG is a place of rejuvenation. This is a happy place. You know what I'm saying? I Can't feel really good. Bye. Bye. Later. You have training. You cleanse yourself of your demons. Yes. <laughs> right? No more demons. Let them out. John, John, John loves the out. demons. You know what I'm saying? He loves to cast them out. Sometimes cast John casts them out on me. Cast them out. <laughs> then I go home with John's demons in my neck. Cast them out, and then you bless yourself with a reward. Nice, crispy cut. Nice, sweet. <laughs> Fresh cut. And, and, fresh cut. And, and maybe like some Coca Cola or something. Yeah, you can reward no, yourself no, with no. a nice soda. No high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> nice, so, nice soda. It's bad for you. It's bad for you. Eat vegetables, eat protein, eat more vegetables. Start with vegetables. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, mm -hmm. um, can you end this? You can end this. I feel like it's over. Nobody's watching. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I, you ended a long time ago. I'll bet you uh, there's got to be a few of them that Somebody's came this still morning. watching. John cut my eyebrows, freaking my old guy eyebrows. Yeah, in. Look look like a grandfather. John, John, t show me how Danaher would cut hair, yeah. and we'll, we'll end this thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any ideas yet. Just talk about the technique. <laughs> you gotta... The philosophy around barbering. You have to express violence in the craft around the ear. The technique behind the trimmer is the most important part of a haircut. You see that, Joe Rogan? You see that technique? Joe, uh, Joe Rogan uh, chimes in. Uh, it's just a curve around the ear where he's carrying that trimmer. You know, but you see that technique, Joe Rogan? That technique? It's amazing. It's more than just a curve. More than just a curve, Joe Rogan. More than just a curve. It might look like a curve on the surface. But actually, it's a straight line. Mm -hmm. Many straight lines, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, many straight lines. <laughs> <laughs>